Okay, uh, so uh, I'm not the only uh, author of this uh, uh, speech, obviously, but I'm not the only one here. Uh, you can find me on Twitter as well as my colleagues. Uh, just to uh, say who I am, my name is Domenica, and two, over two years ago, actually, I created this website, which is mostly a blog, uh, which roughly translates as the archaeological profession or the professionist archaeologist. And the reason behind it was that we thought that archaeology needed to lose uh, is uh, its academic aura. Uh, it became more, um, you know, open to the public. And we thought that this specific task was up to archaeologists, and that the internet could be a very good tool for this. Um, it was a very good time to start a blog, actually, but um, I'll tell you why in a moment. Just I'll go back in time in uh, 2013 because there was a report, a paper written by Marina Lublund, which is an archaeologist and a blogger, a long time blogger herself, uh, who analyzed data from uh, 2012. So this is, a, this is a good starting point uh, to talk about uh, the blogosphere uh, the, of um, uh, talking about archaeology. Um, Marina um, simply started from a Google search using uh, simply uh, keywords that uh, any user uh, could um, read, write in uh, Google search. She came up with a list of 50 blogs, and you can see them here. I don't want you to read the names, obviously, but from the colors, you can see that the blue are the ones written by archaeologists. The yellow ones are the ones written by People who are not archaeologists, obviously, and some of them are archaeology enthusiasts, especially um, archaeomystery enthusiasts. There's a lot going of that going on uh, in the internet in, gen in general and in the Italian blogosphere as well. As for, as for the contents of those blogs, um, many of them, most of them actually, uh, just posted news about archaeology discoveries and uh, uh, events such as exhibition and so on. So mainly news that you can also fi find in uh, uh, internet agencies or websites about news and so um, widely known uh, arguments or uh, subjects already. Um, there is another category that's one about opinions and commentaries that includes blog in which the <laughs> author use archaeological news to give their point of view maybe about uh, about uh, sorry about the uh, archaeology professional issues <coughs> about the archaeology profession um, it is not said in the paper but it's uh, quite logical to think that those blogs were run by archaeologists and finally there are archaeologists who write uh, to propose their research results to the wider public or to other archaeologists. So uh, there are two categories, research for other archaeologists and communication <laughs> if the blog is intended to a wider public. Um, Anyway, blogs were not the only things online uh, at the moment, so uh, here are some of the oldest examples examples of archaeology online. Uh, blogs, when there is a Facebook group, I don't know, maybe some of you, uh, if you, you ever studied pottery, maybe landed on this group, because it's actually um, probably one of the largest community of archaeologists uh, online, pottery archaeology. Uh, it counts over 7,000 members, uh, probably not only uh, Italians, but mostly also foreign. Uh, just let me go back a moment because I forgot to say that. Uh, Marina uh, ends a report saying that archaeo bloggers, archaeologists bloggers also, um, were not aware at the time of their role as communicators. And there wasn't a, a, a community of archaeologists online and that obviously meant that the debate about public archaeology, digital public archaeology, was very, was lacking. Um, over those two years, uh, two, uh, 2013 and 2014, there were many new blogs created and written by archaeologists. So um, I'm just showing some examples of them with the date of the first uh, post. Um, 
all of them are quite different. I say that every blog has its own personality. I will just point to the, I don't know if you see this, this one, which is a web radio. We don't have podcasters in Italy, but we have a web radio <laughs> created by students originally from the University of Siena. Those are other ones. Uh, it became quite clear because every blog has social media accounts, obviously, Twitter, Facebook, and so on. And they, over time, created, I'd say, a community uh, talking about issues, um, linking each other posts, sharing contents that they thought it was worthwhile, uh, was worth talking about. Uh, so it, was, it became quite clear that the archaeo bloggers, this community, let's call it this way, of bloggers, could be um, probably maybe not at the center of the debate on public archaeology, but certainly they had many things to say about this. So there was a first real life meet meeting, and it was um, an idea by Cinzia Dalmaso, which is a journalist and also a blogger, and she called um, a few people, many of them archaeologists, uh, who constantly, in a, <coughs> sorry, who consistently write about cultural heritage online. Uh, the meeting was called Archaeoblog. Uh, I'll use many hashtags uh, in my presentation. Uh, they are all Italians, so if you want to look up some of them, but uh, I'll give you the translation as I speak. Uh, the Archaeoblog hashtag became a trending topic in Italy that afternoon. Uh, it was actively uh, followed by the online community who was interesting in, the, in this team. Obviously, uh, it was mostly people who were interested in archaeologists. Uh, I quoted a passage from a post by Giuliano De Felice, the, which is a researcher at the University of Foggia, which I think that really um, sums up uh, what was said in the meeting. In the meeting. Um, it was... Um, a call to a change uh, that was deep, deeply felt in the way archaeologists was, um, it was lacking communication openness to the public. So mm, there was a change needed. And archaeobloggers take, to, uh, took upon themselves the challenge to driving this change, to claiming the value of their works uh, their work as communicator. So, who are the archaeo bloggers? Archaeo bloggers are archaeologists who make writing and talking about archaeology online part of their daily job. And uh, um, there, there is not one kind of archaeo blogger, obviously, because some of them work for public institutions such as museum, museums. Some of them write on. Um, I, I don't know. They have uh, a more, are more focused maybe on communication and so on, and work uh, as individual, have a, um, kind of a personal blog, but they are focused on archaeology. Uh, sometimes, anyway, archaeobloggers do coordinate themselves, because uh, I'm talking about archaeobloggers. It's, a, uh, I'd say, community, but it's not organized. There's not, there are not membership cards. Uh, but sometimes they do coordinate to take part in events such as the Day Archaeology uh, the, from past, last year. Uh, following with that meeting in November, in fact, Francesco Ripanti, who is, uh, who is archaeologist and movie maker, uh, issued a call to arms to Italian archaeobloggers to boost participation. The previous year, there were like 10 posts from Italy. And in, two, uh, in 2014, we have uh, 20, uh, 27 of them. Uh, more than half of them were written by archaeobloggers. Um, it was created uh, a team of sorts. Everyone was assigned a specific subject to cover according to their professional experiences. And so there was a large coverage from rescue archaeology to video make making to reenactment to open access data, and so on. Um, the day archaeology was a, a huge success, success uh, online because the archaeobloggers um, teamed up also on social media. So there was uh, the content uh, was shared on Facebook, on Twitter, and there was a, a huge boost in the particip participation. 
In fact, the organizers created a category Italy that wasn't present before that, um, which, is, which doesn't indicate the location on the excavation, but actually a category that reunites all posts written by Italian archaeologists. And there was a huge boost, uh, as I was saying, of the visits from Italy. So the experiment was successful also because um, many blogs um, posted an Italian version, obviously, uh, of their post on their own blog. Uh, I don't have all the data for that day, but this is um, the Profession Archaeologo blog, uh, blog post for that day. And you can see the reach that it's really impressive for, for one post only. Um, it shows that there, there is a large, a great interest in uh, the archaeological world job in general, but the comments that we received on Facebook or on our website show it also that archaeologists themselves look for someone who can, in, uh, in a way, represent them. Because this is a post that's ironic, uh, uh, also has some fanciful writing. Uh, it's quite funny, but it talks about a very common reality of archaeologists who work in rescue archaeology. So it was um, very uh, shared and commented online. Uh, very uh, briefly, this is the second uh, meeting. Uh, I didn't say this earlier, but this is a huge event that takes place uh, in the late autumn. Uh, it's uh, a, um, a festival, basically, of uh, uh, tourism based on archaeologists. And in the, in the recent years, it's also, um, it's also um, giving an overview of the archaeological work market. So it's um, probably the main event uh, which has to do with archaeology in Italy. Uh, that year, uh, there were many new blogs. Uh, we, were, we talked also about the success of the day archaeology. Uh, it was also presented a um, new project because all that energy that was created for the day archaeology, all that energy that created all those posts, uh, it was decided that it shouldn't get lost. So there was the project of creating a book after that. Um, anyway, one of the main themes of the, of the second meeting was the uh, strategy behind the online presence of many blogs and um, the peculiarities of online communication, especially when working for a cultural institution. Uh, many <laughs> said also how important it is to measure uh, your engagement using analytics, insights, or whatever, because you sometimes do have the impression of talking in the void, but you're not. Someone is reading you, maybe. Someone is watching you. It is important to have those data to understand if you're doing a good job or not. Uh, and there was also another uh, question that became very central in the debate that afternoon, which is, archaeological blogging can become a proper profession. Mm, and looking at it the other way around, people in charge of online communication for archaeological institutions need to have an education in archaeology. I don't actually have the answers, because, the answer because there are many answers possible. But I do have some suggest, suggestion. Um, although I go on and talk about another peculiarity of archeo the archaeo blogging mov movement, um, it kind of adds to the to the matter to the question, and it is that. In 2000, uh, in uh, sorry, 2013, archaeoblogging uh, became a way of using the visibility allowed by internet in bringing attention to the wider public on most on <clears throat> some of deep, deeply felt issues of our profession. Uh, I could show many cases. Uh, anyway, I show this example here. Uh, because it was one, of, uh, one occasion in which a public institution, in this case our Ministry uh, of Cultural Heritage and Tourism, uh, adopted or promoted uh, an event that was 
um, seen as short-sighted and anyway argue, uh, anyway not um, uh, okay I, I'll go on sorry <laughs> a bit uh, uh, okay so I don't know uh, in other countries, but in Italy, this is case, uh, these cases happen quite often. There are local institutions, or sometimes even the ministry, which promote such events. Uh, there is usually a huge reaction to this. So in, uh, two, uh, in 2013, there was this uh, event, the Night of Museums, which was scheduled for May. Uh, on uh, their Facebook page, the ministry issued a call for volunteers um, to keep those museums open. Now, we, this will be, wouldn't be a problem, but in a country in which there is a large number of unemployed cultural heritage workers, provoked a very strong negative reaction. And so, um, this is are, those are just some example, you know, satiric uh, drawing and hashtags online protesting against this um, this um, proposal. Um, the answer given by the representative of the ministry, the ministry insisted that volunteer work was essential to the survival itself of museums and cultural institutions, which is true. But as I said, in a country in which there, are a large, there is a num number of unemployed cultural heritage workers, this obviously created some very strong reaction. This anger that was, was shown in the comments under the Facebook post was channeled very soon in a protest online. No, uh, 18 May and uh, volunteer to whom were some of the hashtags more used, with archaeologists putting their face uh, and their name in this protest. And then there was also a, a public manifestation uh, with archaeologists, oh, this okay. This is not the last one, and, and then this is not the correct version. But anyway, uh, all archaeologists supported by uh, some of the um, archaeological, uh, the professional associations of archaeologists, uh, at this um, public uh, um, public gathering in Rome and protested against this uh, um, this um, event. This is only one of the many episodes of organized protests which will basically maintain the same modus operandi in the following months. The archaeobloggers using their online visibility spread awareness and support workers' rights, a debate also the issues of the profession and oppose practices and political choices by public institutions that are felt as unfair, short-sighted and the protest spreads online and then goes off, offline. There is another example, but I just go on. Uh, but just I want to show this one. This is another post by professional archaeologist, and also there the outreach is quite interesting. Uh, those are very big numbers um, from uh, for a post that focuses on the professional issues of archaeologists. Okay. Um, as I said, those protests found a very uh, useful venue in, uh, in Twitter, social media in general, but especially in Twitter, uh, which was also in those past two years a place where new communication experiments took life. So I don't know if there are uh, in, uh, in the international Twitter as well, but in Italy we have the talking statues. Yes, <laughs> which have their own <coughs> hashtag, uh, and those are the most, um, the oldest of them. Uh, they write about um, the the museums. They uh, it's a funny kind of communication. There are love stories between them, for instance. So it's a way to engage the the public and to uh, create uh, yes, educate the public, but. Uh, being funny, ironic. Those are some other same examples. I'll just go on. Um, from the day of archaeology to um, 2014, uh, as I said, um, originated this project. This is a book. was published this year in March. 
and uh, it started with posts from the archaeology, uh, other um, art, I don't want to say articles because they are uh, written pieces that are very um, easy to read, the, the language, the internet language translates in this book. Uh, it was um, a huge success, it's at its at, uh, at second edition, if I'm not wrong. It toured Italy, it was presented in uh, bookshops and uh, uh, university departments and so on. It, it was a way in which archaeologists told their own stories. So those are some of the pictures of the, to, of, the, of the tour. And the two questions basically were, well, what, what is it that archaeologists actually do? But mostly, what it is that archaeologists can do after their degree, because in a crisis, in an economic crisis like this one, obviously not everyone thinks that they can find a job uh, in the tra traditional way in which archaeologists is perceived. Uh, archaeologists themselves feel that either they are a field archaeologist or work in a lab in a university, or otherwise they're not archaeologists at all. Uh, okay, I'll just be very, very quickly, quickly here, because uh, it was only a matter of time um, for institution to somewhat, somewhat recognize the, the value of the work of the archaeo bloggers as uh, communicators. So they organized the, the blog tours, some blog tours uh, for archaeologists. This is the one, the first one that we did in Firenze. This is uh, very recent in Ravenna with the ministry. Uh, for this year, the archaeologist, uh, the archaeologist was organized a tour in uh, the Forum Pacis in Rome, in which they invited also journalists. So the, the archaeologist not only was a huge success, success online, making it in the trending topics uh, in Italy for that day, but also was um, a way to celebrate archaeology uh, nationally because it was also transmitted on national. TV. Uh, those are some numbers, those are written in Italian, but you can read the number of the reach of the Twitter, of our Twitter account for that day. It, um, it's uh, uh, again quite impressive and uh, um, I think that it is important, as I said before, uh, to um, measure the results that you have. In the end, okay, this is, I just go very quickly, just to, to hand this. There are very uh, encouraging signs of openness uh, in uh, the uh, in Italian archaeology and in this cult cultural institution about communication online. It's a growing phenomenon, which means that it is considered cool, so everyone wants to be on Twitter or on Facebook and wants to organize uh, some, something or other. Uh, many are actually willing to ri rise to the challenge, but on the other, on the negative side, there is a lack of uh, coordination. I think the first paper this morning talked at some proposal about coordination and about some kind of um, way to um, put together all this energy and create some kind of long-term planning. That's also true for Italy. And there is also a lack of specific knowledge about online tools. And I think that uh, Lisa's paper could be very useful for Italian archaeologists to Lisa's book. Uh, because many of them um, are people that are writing maybe for a website, for a um, museum, but they are people that do other, job, other jobs, and so they have no idea how actually thing, write for the web or how um, create engagement. There are some very funny examples about that that I could show you, but anyway. Uh, obviously, it's a very important, it's a very um, taxing job to be online, uh, uh, have a social media that engages people. So there's also a very high mortality rate of those events. But, you know, we're hopeful. So <laughs> that's it. Thank you.